you know, making movies is hard. Making movies is hard. Welcome. This is the podcast about the struggle of being an independent filmmaker. I'm Mark Bussell, the founding host of the podcast, and I'm a sci-fi horror filmmaker, and my first feature film, The Alternate, is out right now. And I'm Eric Toms, the producer of the Making Movies is Hard podcast. I'm a comedian, writer, and actor, and my first film, Bakersfield Noir, will be out next year. This week, we talked to Maria Luftuf and Loove Martinson about their first-time documentary filmmakers, uh, talking about their upcoming release, Calendar Girls. We'll discuss their amazing film festival run and what it was like to premiere at Sundance, as well as working on location with kids. And then we'll play a round of my creation, The Game. I'm trying to trying to uh, like channel Liz there, uh, where I'll be asked a question for the first time ever. But first, Alric, how you doing? Well, I'm doing very well because I'm talking to you today, which is exciting and new. Um, yeah, you know, Eric had this interview he wanted to do with these these filmmakers and, you know, we didn't really have room in the schedule. So we're like, Eric, go for it. And then let's do a bonus episode. So here we are, bonus episode time, which is really fun. Uh, we weren't sure if we were going to make this a Patreon only thing, but uh, surprise, surprise, we wanted to just give you all a holiday extra. So we released this all for y'all in the world. So everyone could, that listens to the show can listen to this. I don't know what day we're going to drop this. Probably maybe right before Christmas as a little early Christmas present, I think might be a good idea. <laughs> it's a stocking stuffer. Yeah, exactly. A little stocking stuffer. Um, but yeah, no, I'm doing good. Um yeah, I think on the on one of the last episodes, I talked about how I had a meeting the day that we recorded. Did not happen. Was going to happen uh, the next day. Also did not happen. Uh, Maybe going to happen today. Uh, did not happen, or I don't think it's going to happen. So uh, I don't think we're going to have it till next Monday. But basically, it means that there's going to be no excitement for the rest of the year because it's. I think it's a little too late to like start you know making offers or whatever. Or like if we do make an offer next week. We almost certainly won't hear back until after Christmas, um, but I'm OK with that. I don't feel like there's any rush, like whatever, you know, um, don't you think it's so odd that in our business it is just it's just everybody knows that, like, look, the t last two weeks in December, nobody's going to do anything like we're just wildly lazy like that. Like we're taking a full two weeks off and we'll just be we'll be staring at uh, at the wall. Well, it's funny because like my the my writer buddy was like, "Oh, if we went, if we don't do anything before Thanksgiving, it's over for the end of the yeah. year. <laughs> Nothing's gonna happen after Thanksgiving." And I was like, "Dude, I think you're being a little like crazy." And then like, <laughs> then he was like, "Oh, it's December. Oh, we don't do oh, no, blah blah." He's like, just like making a big deal. And and then you know, talking to Liz uh, last week or whenever it was, she was like. Oh, yeah. Like, you know, we made an offer and we're waiting to hear back. It's like, yeah, shit does happen in December, people. It's just like a yeah. mess. So it's a total like d constructed thing that like you can't do any business, you know, around the holidays. Of course, people want to do business. Mo movies are being made during the holidays all the time. Yeah, there's a movie being made right now in, in uh, the Bay Area that like I'm going to be working on. So it's like it's just always things happening. Don't believe the hype. Just move your project forward. Who cares? You know, and like <laughs> the writer, again, I'm really bragging on this guy. I love John. He's a great guy. But he was just talking about how like, oh, we won't hear anything for the end of the year. It's like, who cares if we don't hear anything until like Jan <laughs> January? What's the difference? It makes no difference. I think he just wanted to, you know, he wants to move it forward and he's just excited. So, but uh, it's all going to be good. Um, other than that, yeah, just um, trying to, I'm like thinking about writing. I'm not actually writing, but I'm like thinking about it a lot and like, you know, okay, when am I going to, how am I going to sit down? When am I going to do this? So I think over the next couple of weeks before the new year, I'm going to get some writing done. So I don't think I'm going to write a whole movie or half a movie or anything. But think, <laughs> you're not, you're not going to write a movie over the course of two weeks. No, if I get, well, I have it all out. So I don't know if you've been hearing about this, but I have my whole, this movie all outlined and like, I have like half of it written. So like 45, 50 pages written. Oh, wow. uh, I just need to fucking finish it. Um, and like, I, I, I pretty much know what everything's. I, yeah, well, everything that's going to happen, I know. So it's like I, I just need to put it into action. And, uh, you know, so if I get t like 10, 12 pages, 20 pages between now and the end of the year, I'll be stoked. Mm -hmm. um, but I really want to make this get this movie out of my system, because I think once I get that done, then I can move on to something else. Because I tried to write something else while this movie was still half written and it just didn't work. And I think it's because this is blocking me. So, yeah. But what's going on with you, Eric? What does Eric do during the holidays? What's, what what's is, happening? What's happening with me? Uh, lots are happening. I have got, um, 
uh, my like as I said in the intro, my my first feature films coming out next year. So the editor just sent me a block of edits that he has just uh, worked on. So I have to give the okay of those and see if we need to do any reshoots or anything like that. So that's very exciting. Wow. Uh, we're hoping to get picture lock before the end of the year. Wow. Um, we're close, but as you know, it's it's the it, the devil is in the details. So you, you want to get like all of the little shots together. You need to make sure like all the, everything is, is all set and looks, and you're happy with it. Um, I had a very fancy meeting uh, last week with a very Ooh. fancy company regarding a script that I wrote 10 years ago. Wow. Um, that has uh, finally been kind of making the rounds. Uh, it's it's way too early to talk about much else. Um, uh, but during the holiday break, they have said that they're going to be sending out the script to a few directors as well as uh, their production manager. Wow. So people are reading my stuff, which is cool, and it. Uh, this is the first script I've ever gotten an option on, and for those of you playing the home game, I wrote a script 10 years ago, and I've so far made $200 off of that script, so guys, this is a business model that will sustain you. Um, granted, you don't need money. Um, <laughs> yeah, totally. But yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but that's very exciting. Uh, and then I'm just looking forward to hanging out with the family. I got, you know, I have two kids uh, and they are in seventh and fifth grade. And they're still at a super fun age where they want to go out and do stuff with me. So I think we're going to go, we're going to rent a boat uh, this weekend. Um, wow. Which sounds, it sounds very fancy. In essence, it's like a golf cart that is in the water. And you can kind of putt around like the, uh, the 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 harbor in it, and then you bring food and things, and then like you know we're just gonna have lunch in it. Uh, Sounds so yeah. nice. Yeah, that'll be fun. It'll be a good time. Um, okay, I have a few things. Um, one, uh, the fancy company. Can mm -hmm. you say what the budget level of this script is, or in the rough <laughs> ballpark? The I mean I can tell you the the script uh, is it's two characters in one location. And oh, is it the one I read? I believe so, yeah. Uh, oh. Yeah. So it's funny, when they asked me during this fancy meeting, just like, well, how much can we? do you think we can shoot this for? And I was like, honestly, below the line, like production, you can shoot it for $250,000. Now, how much those actors want to be in there, I don't know, a bazillion dollars? Like, that's that's completely up to them. But, I mean, the script is designed to be very cost effect friendly which is one of the reasons why i think like they're they're, they're interested in it uh yeah. and it's very much an actor's showcase so i i think that if you got the kind of an actors that um would get some sort of theatrical release i think it would be in the five million dollar range but having right. said that you could i believe easily do this script for half a million to three quarters of a million and have it come out looking really nice yeah. I mean, if you think of Ex Machina, right, with Oscar Isaacs, who was like a, a pretty big star at that time, but not nearly as big as he is now. Um, I think that was like something around two million or two to three million or something. And your movie is sort of similar, like in like locations and, and sort of style. I wouldn't say style necessarily, but like, I guess the what happens in the story, the kind of content, it's like, you know, all within this one space. So I could see it being around a $2 million movie with some really nice talent, you know, or maybe four. Um, yeah. But very cool, man. That's awesome. That's really exciting news. I want to know the, the name of the fancy company. Maybe you can tell me after this. I will. I will 100% tell you afterwards. Ooh, I get to know. <laughs> Liz wouldn't tell me who her actor was from the last episode. Oh, really? She would not tell me. Even off the mics? No, not she. She doesn't want to jinx it. She doesn't want to say anything until she she knows either way. <laughs> so. Are you are you superstitious like that? Or are you afraid to talk about anything for fear of it coming true or not true? I'm superstitious about specific things. I'm not superstitious about um, things like that. You know, like I like I you know privately I've told a lot of my friends like who we've gone out to for this movie. You know who we've gotten knows from and whatever and all that stuff. But like um, you know I'm superstitious. Like if so. My, <laughs> It's a funny story. So my mom lives in, in Nevada and okay. uh, me and my brother are, and my mom too, are big, we're all football fans. And since we were big, probably like 10 to 12, we've been betting on football with my dad. Uh, it was like a thing <laughs> that we just did forever. 
Um, and he let us start betting really too young, but we really had a fun time doing it. Um, and then, uh, what's the ballpark of those bets? Is it like, Oh, like five, five bucks. Okay. Five, okay. Yeah. Five, five, 10 bucks. Okay. Um, but then, uh, you know, so he, he died a couple of years ago and then my mom basically kept it going for us, you know, and she goes down there, but she does, she never bet before, you know, ever. And she still hasn't ever bet any of her own money. But she like fills out the cards for us, mm-hmm. but you know she'll constantly get it wrong. So like she'll like go and like she'll put a bet in, and then I'll be like, okay, mom, double check what you got, and she'll like, oh, oh, I put the Seahawks, not the not the Niners or whatever. <laughs> then and then she'll go back and she'll she'll change it, and like you know she knows the guys down there, so they'll they'll change bets around for her. But so the the superstitious part is like if, if she puts a bet in wrong and she says, oh no, I'm gonna change it, I can't let her change it unless I have to make another bet. Because I'm so super superstitious that like what she actually put in incorrectly will be the true thing and I'll win. That's the winner combination. Yeah. So like, but I but I believe that my original bet is also could be that way. So I don't want to miss out. So I have to do both. So basically, I have to do another bet because I won't. I won't. It's just too much for me to be like, like I just feel like this. You know, fate will screw me. Yeah. I uh, if I if I stick to my guns and not go with this new random chance you know um and and that because that's bitten me in the butt before we're like <laughs> oh my dad's like oh you, you should do it this way and i'm like no 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 you're wrong and then like of course he's right and like you know would have been like ten thousand dollars i would have won or whatever um you know but like uh maybe a thousand dollars something like that but anyway so then <laughs> I can't. if anyone suggests anything you know or like I think, well, not suggest. I should basically try not to take suggestions from my, my mom or my dad or my brother, because like, then it, it's like, then I'll just blame them if it's wrong. Um, but like, if anything like that happens where it's random, I just have to go. So that's how I'm superstitious. So it's mm. a different brand of superstition, I think, than what Liz <laughs> subscribes to. Yeah, I, I am. I, I am such an existentialist. I don't believe in like any superstition. So I will oh, walk wow. underneath a ladder. If a black cat crosses my path, I don't care. Uh, wow. I have no problem. I, I'm not going to say the name of the production company because I believe it's it's uh, it's, uh, it's wrong. Of kind of politeness. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like it's, it's kind of a faux pas in our, in our business. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Yeah, I'll tell you who what actors we're going out to. It's like, well, yeah. they're going to come. They're going to come. It has nothing to do with the universe hearing me whisper. Yeah, uh, as long as you're not like, you know, blasting it out publicly yeah. for, you know, because then I think like, then it just... I don't know. Yeah, that's I don't think is a good look for whatever reason to like be like, we're reaching out to blah, blah, blah. Wish me luck. It's like, you know, no one that's just not good for anyone, you know. And also you need. Yeah, you need that that big, exciting announcement later on to come down just like, oh, you know, we just attached. We just attached when it's official, when they're everyone says it's OK to release it, because like apparently there's all these rules like people sign on. It's like, OK, well, don't say anything yet. You got to yeah. wait. We're uh, we're currently going out to uh to to Burt Reynolds hologram is really that's what we're <laughs> right. shooting for. Uh, I hope we get him. Yeah, and then if you don't get Burt Reynolds, then you'll get um Marlon Brando. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I should be so lucky. You know what else is great? Just like Burt Reynolds hologram, our Patreon. So don't forget to support us on Patreon, everybody. Uh, it helps us out create this show. Uh, it and we are able to connect with our audience in such a fantastic way. So please go over to patreon.com forward slash MMIH podcast today. And for just $1.99 a month, you can get all of the back episodes, which eventually are all going to be behind a paint wall. So far, how many are behind the paywall now? Oh, all of seasons four, five, and six, and yeah. half of season three, uh, which I'm working on right now. So by the time you hear this, it'll probably be all of season three, and it'll probably be only season ones and two that's left. And then by the time the new year hits, it'll be only seasons seven, eight, and the part of nine that'll be available that are not behind the paywall. So all the old days with Timothy, all the beginning episodes with Liz, all gone. Oh, unless unless you pay $1.99 a month to our Patreon and then you have access to all of those along with a bunch of other bonus content. 
uh, videos and all of our uh, our weekly meetings as well, which were super fun. Well, they're always hilarious. I love listening to you guys and talking with y'all. Oh, yeah, it's fun. That's like basically no one right now knows who you are uh, because yeah. um, you're only on those those weekly meetings. They've heard your name <laughs> being thanked, of course, in the episode, but you've never done this. So uh, before we move on to um, the interview, really quick, give people three facts about yourself that will kind of describe you in a nutshell of who you are. I tell you what, let's do, let's, we'll do, uh, uh, four truths and a lie. Um, uh, I have been a stand up comedian for the last 20 years. Um, I, my first feature film, which is coming out next year, I made for a thousand dollars. Um, uh, I am a, uh, a Nichols finalist, uh, and I have starred alongside Eric Roberts. Hmm. That's tough because I, I I know two of them to be true, mm-hmm. and then the other two feel like they both could be true. Um, maybe you're in, you are like a Nickel semifinalist, but not a finalist. Was that right? That is correct. I, yeah, I was a semifinalist for Nichols. Well done. You do know yes. me very well. <laughs> For those who have only met movie. you in person once, I know you very well. <laughs> that is the thing that's so odd about us. Yeah, like we have been corresponding for the last year and a half weekly. Like, re- I mean, like texting probably every day. And yeah. we hung out in person one time at Austin, and it was the most fun. It, it was a great weekend. It was yeah. very, very fun. And, you know, just the, 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 you know, despite what we're going to work out with our, you know, sponsors to go next year as a podcast or whatever, I think I'm probably going to go personally. Mm-hmm. Most likely, no matter what, um, just because I had such a good time. But uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. But hopefully, we just go as a show again yeah. and uh, do more stuff. That'll be really cool. Let's get to your conversation with um, Maria uh, Lefoy. Lua, something. Uh, why don't I go ahead and take this? Uh, all right, without any more jibber jabber, why don't we go ahead and go to my interview with Maria Luftoff and Luv Martinson and their movie, Calendar Girls. Guys, welcome to the podcast. Please introduce yourselves. Okay, thank you. I'm Maria Lou Hubert. And, and I am Lou V. Martinson. And we're the co-directors and co-producers and co-everything of this film and in life. Now, your documentary is Calendar Girls. Please give us the elevator pitch for Calendar Girls. <laughs> Maria, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you know, we've been we've been doing this so many times, and but now we're in the, in a moment where we just we're just um, moving forward. So it, so it feels a bit weird to <laughs> to go back to talk about this film again. But okay, the elevator pitch. This is a, a feel good dance documentary about a senior dance team in Florida, and it's also about a film about friendship. And it's a, a lot about dance, and it's about aging on your own terms, I guess. That's a terrific way to put it. Uh, now, we met doing uh, a Q&A a little while ago, and I was so taken by the two of you in this film that I approached the the uh, the uh, the hosts of our podcast and said, I would love to interview these people because I think this is a fantastic story. And they said, yeah, sure, sounds good. Um, so I, now... What I know about the two of you, so neither one of you were filmer, filmmakers per se, not, not professional filmmakers when you decided to, to, to do this. So where were you in your careers when you decided to take on Calendar Girls? We were not even amateur filmmakers. <laughs> we were not filmmakers at all. <laughs> no, uh, not at all. We had made, uh, the only thing we had made was a um, music video. We were both, um, I'm a... Or I still am. I'm, I'm a composer for mainly film music, but also uh, I played in a lot, a lot of bands and produced a lot of other music. And Maria also played in bands before. Um, so so we, what we did, we once we did a music video for one or uh, for Maria's band. That was our only like filmmaking experience. Yes, filming my family in Florida. <laughs> so we were used to film in Florida, which makes with with this light that you have in Florida, everything 
looks good <laughs> in, in a way compared to Sweden, which is all dark and gray. So that was a good start. And we decided when we did this, this um, music video, that was a few years ago, but also my dad used to live in Florida part time. And we thought, okay, we have to find a way to, to spend more time here and maybe do something else because we, we have careers as, as you said, of film, make, film composer, composer or composer for TV and, and films. And I've been a graphic designer and art director for, I don't know, 10, 15 years. And we were in, in a time of our, of our our lives and careers that we thought, okay, we can do this. We're pretty good. But it's, oh, it's it started to get boring. We thought, okay. You started repeating yourself in your, like, you, when you starting to know your work that good and is you get to a point where you don't really know how to, how can I, how can this be interesting for me? So you wanted to challenge yourselves. Yeah. Yes. So, yes. So, and um, it was also at the time of our second uh, kid was, he was three months old at this time. Um, so it was a perfect uh, time in your life to start something because we had some time off. You, when you live in Sweden, you get a lot of time off. When you get kids, you get to have like a parent longer parental leave. It's one and a um, half year for. So it's all one and a half years. Well, <laughs> yes, it's not like that in the we US. Can share as we like. So yeah. Yeah, we took like half of it each. Yeah. So so it's a time to like um, take a step back from your work life and start to think about okay, what what else can we do and. Is this the, what we want to do? And then we start discussing, maybe we should do a project together in some way. I'm sorry, I'm still reeling from one and a half years of <laughs> leave. Yes, in the uh, United States, you get, I think, about combined 20 minutes. Then, they're, then they say, get back to work. I know. It's, oh, uh, no, I don't know how you do it. It's, I it's, have no idea how yeah. you do this. I don't uh, know. It's a culture we have in Sweden it to is, get to is. do this. And... and um, and we used it in uh, a way. Of course, you spend time with the kids, but you also get some time to think, and and yeah. that was a good thing. So we had, so we had this idea of uh, doing a project and maybe doing a film together. So that that was the starting point, and we started doing a uh, filming some Swedish people in Florida because we were there while we were taking the time some time off. We were in Florida and. The idea was to film Swedish people there. Um, so we had a small camera and some microphones with us to to do this, to start this documentary project that we had in mind with the Swedish people. And, and, just and we to, did. We'd... Yeah, I'm sorry, just to, to, to reiterate. So was was there any other crew or was it just the two of you? Just the two of yeah, us. Yeah, just okay. the two of us all the time. <laughs> yes, it's been the, the yeah. two of us <laughs> all the time. But yeah, so we started that project with the Swedish people. We did a few interviews, but it was really, it was hard as some of them didn't want to, to be in a film and there it stopped, obviously. Yeah. But, but we were in the mindset of thinking of ideas. And so when we stumbled upon the Kalina Girls at a kids event, we thought, okay, this is more interesting. Let's try to, to do something with them instead and they they were so open they said yeah sure we can do everything anything i want to be in the film and i want to be in the film and everybody wanted to to I be in the film and that was a that was the opposite of the swedish people that we were trying to film that they didn't actually want to be filmed yeah just to give people context so the calendar girls uh for those who haven't watched the documentary or maybe aren't familiar with them it's it's a group of women who are retirement age uh they're based in florida and they wear um uh, they were very outrageous kind of clothes, uh, and they danced typically for charity events. Yes. Um, and so you had originally seen them. It was like a, a, a touch a truck or it was some sort of a film or fair. I'm sorry, some sort of fair, right? Yeah, exactly. It was the kids event called touch a truck. Um, and our oldest kid, he was crazy about cars at that time. I think he was like three. Yeah. So, so they were part of this event where you could look at big cars and tractors and everything. And they just they were dancing on in the, on the back of a truck. <laughs> so <laughs> that's just um, 
and yes, they, as you say, they are, you know, most of the time dressed in very outrageous costumes. And this year they had unicorn hats. No, that was oh, when we started filming. So a lot of the times in the film, they, they wear unicorn hats, which we just love because it's, it's, it's a, it's a great thing that they do have that. Yeah. So. So they really, when we saw them, it was like, at first you just get uh, the energy and you really, you were impressed by the, the whole appearance and they really draw, draw all the attention to them. So that was our first impression. And then you start thinking about, we got a lot of like mixed emotions when we saw them. And what kind of mixed emotions were you feeling? Uh, it was, uh, uh like just a positive feeling of seeing them uh and being um inspired by them i think but also the feeling of um like a bit of um almost embarrassment for for them if you know what i mean uh, which is crazy but yeah to be honest the first yeah, feeling was just like oh, aren't they a bit too old to be doing something like this was our first and now when we've been working with this for five years almost, and we've been thinking about this, it's like, oh, how can we ever think like that? Yeah. But that was also something that we realized like like the same day. Why why do we think like yeah. this? Why? Yeah, it was why? just the first, you know, the first feeling that you had this. I guess we were not in. used to it. We've yeah. never seen people that age just dance in these kinds of costumes, which is sad. Yeah. But they faced we had to face our own prejudice about, about older people i guess yeah it's, about, just, well, it's a ageism that's built in in yes, a lot of people i think it is it's um yeah and in watching the film i think it becomes very clear that uh the women dress provocatively they, they dress in very sexy outfits and they have fishnet stockings and the heels and everything else um and uh you know we spoke a little bit on the night of the 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 screening that it, at first you had talked about like, oh, it felt very desperate. But then over time that went from desperation to no, just celebration. It's just these women who are, are having fun. That's really what they're doing here. Yeah, absolutely. And absolutely. yeah, uh, it's not like uh, it was, you really, we saw that feeling in instantly. We questioned our feelings. So that was the, what started the whole process. Like it wasn't that we were feeling that wasn't uh, what lasted in us. What lasted was their energy and their happiness and their friendship and everything. So that was the what sparked the idea, I think. But also that we saw this other feeling made us think that it could be a um, film. Because yeah, it, there's be. a need for for this to show this to the rest of the world, too. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Now, because it's a documentary, of course, you're just... I always think documentarian, documentarians are kind of crazy because you're just hoping to you're going out with your cameras just hoping to capture lightning in a bottle. You're you're hoping something great happens. Uh, we're actually we're talking about that. We're starting a few new ideas and we're planning a trip going to a place and it's going to cost a lot of money and it's going to take a lot of time and we might be able to speak to a person for 10 minutes. Yes, and it's or maybe it doesn't happen and then yeah. we spend a lot of money and so much time doing nothing. <laughs> so that's exactly how it is. And to find babysitters and yeah. to, you it's know, a whole, it's, a it's process, crazy. Yeah. Do, it's like, it's... do we really, do we have the energy to do this? <laughs> I do want to talk about the two of you being parents in a, in a little bit, but first off, just to give an idea. So how many shoot days, if you had to estimate, were, were was Calendar Girls? Good question. Oh, um, uh, it went back and forth four times, and we were there for like four to eight weeks yeah. each time, and we filmed like every 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 day. Wow, we don't know. It's we have so much. I would say we maybe we a uh, hundred days isn't probably more, but wow. But we, what we did, we filmed all the time. So a lot of the time was just getting to know them and, you know, getting, getting them being used to us hanging around them. So there's so much material that we didn't 
of course didn't use but th that we never plan on using either it was a and that we never of, even looked at no because we, we know we are not going to use this day at all they get used to the cameras and and we got used to the yeah. cameras because we had to you know learn the technique we yeah. had to practice and you never know when something did happen all of a sudden something did happen that made sense and that you realize in the editing that oh we have this from this day that we filmed the whole day of them practicing that we thought this is nothing but when you put the pieces together uh, and you realize what points in in the events that happened uh, some some points that we didn't even know that we had filmed we realized okay we have yeah. actually caught this on film yes like uh, there is a scene when they talk about there's a character uh, uh, um a woman in the in the team that's got a disease and they talk about that before practice and we our cameras were rolling but we didn't pay attention to it we had no idea at that time that she was talking about a serious illness that she had got because she she didn't tell us about this no we didn't know about it uh, but she talked to one of the other ladies and that was uh, things like that that we could find in the material that we had no idea that we had filmed when we knew when in the editing that we knew or oh, we're looking for uh, pieces to puzzle together the story of how the that illness um, uh, evolved mm -hmm. that we could find stuff like this and in this all this material so so it's really and, and and i think another thing is because we knew we have this limited time we're going back to sweden we, we were there for a few weeks and we're going back and we don't know when we can do this again so i guess we just felt like what could we have to do as much as we possibly can when we yeah when we so when you were when you were going back to sweden were, is that when you were editing the footage and kind of putting it together and like oh, okay here's this could be a potential storyline here this one could be yes that's how so, we did it so every time we went back and we edited and we, the, it got more and more clear what we wanted to do so the first period, we just filmed everything, everywhere, everyone. We did a lot of interviews. We couldn't focus really on anything. <laughs> but yeah, we didn't know who to film because the, the group consists of, uh, I think there are almost 30 women, and we had no idea who the film was going to be about. So we had to learn, get to know them, and learn who will have who will have an interesting story that will um combined good with the other stories and who is a person that is willing to, yeah. to get more personal and that we and also we knew early on that we didn't want the film to be a, about their past since a lot of films about uh, older people are they're talking about their past lives so we wanted to focus on what's happening now and it's impossible to know who's who of these persons are going to have a uh, uh, things happening in their lives at this moment that are going to be interesting for the film so we had to we started filming i think nine of them we followed more closely and then we narrowed down during the process okay these are more uh, interesting and things are happening so that's also why we had to film so much because because we didn't know who's who was you didn't know where to f yeah you didn't know what was going to to follow up now it, it's just the two of you figuring this out as you go along. Were there any major disasters or were you, were you, I mean, cause clearly you, you have roots in the entertainment industry, even though you weren't necessarily documentary filmmakers. Yeah. Yeah. Were there other filmmakers that you were talking to during this process that were kind of helping you give a little bit of guidance or was there anybody that you were kind of, you were watching their work and kind of saying like, Oh, we should, we should be looking at these. We, we got a lot of help from, we have some friends, that have made there are successful documentary filmmakers and also producers and so we we uh, took a lot of help from them in this yeah in we beginning. shared like, materials what do you think about this we shared yeah. rough cuts we shared everything and also advice on how, how to approach people and we tried to get as much since we're we're humble in that we didn't know that much about how to about the process of making we were we were very um confident in our vision of the film so that's that's why we wanted to keep everything to the two of us like producing it us ourselves and not uh, bringing in an outside editor because we had the vision was very clear 
but the process of how to actually achieve it was a bit um we, yeah we needed advice we need you, you yeah. need advice from other people too and i think that worked very good just sharing with people and, and getting some advice during the process now talk talk a little bit to your there's the two of you uh how are you dividing your duties amongst the two of you who how did you decide like okay you're going to take care of this i'll take care of this and then we'll meet somewhere in the middle <laughs> oh it's been we never decided anything <laughs> it's more like <laughs> it's happened i think it comes naturally we've been together for a long time and we know each other very well and we know our strength and so it's very natural we didn't actually have to talk about who will do this and who will do that it's just we know each other so good so so it's it's just happening i think but it's been it's a, like when you're uh, uh in if you're in a relationship you have like uh chores at home you know who yeah. who's what you know yeah you, you don't have to talk about it and hopefully it comes out even evenly <laughs> so, yeah uh, now, also you two being together, as you mentioned before, your your parents. You have two beautiful kids, which I, who I got to meet, uh, and they're very sweet. Uh, but how are you spending all the time with the calendar girls and still raising these kids? How how was talk about childcare? Talk about just that that time with the children. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, all thanks to my parents. Actually, we we had to bring them uh, for all the filming periods. We brought them with us to Florida and. They were babysitting. We could never Home have done this film without your parents, and also my my mom has helped a lot in Sweden. Yeah. But it's yeah, and it's been a it's interesting thing about doing a film about women our parents' age, mm -hmm. and and also about freedom for women this age to to maybe choose not to be a a full time grandma. Yeah. Also, we are so dependent on our parents. So that's been interesting to, you know, maybe we shouldn't take them for granted. Maybe they want to do something else. So so I I hope we, we've been... I think we also may, might have sparked something in them to go and do something else. Cause oh, really? They have actually... They, we live in, in Stockholm, but now they are trying to move out of Stockholm just to get away from us. <laughs> 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 you know? I a home in Italy, yeah, but, so I mean, to film, get some freedom. That's what the film does to people. <laughs> so they're just afraid that you guys are going to make another documentary, and then they're going to be stuck with the kids again. So like, we got to get out of here. No, but I think uh, the girls is inspiring to people, um, in, especially in their age, to go out and do the thing you dreamed of, might that you wanted to do all your life, but, but you were scared of doing. Yeah, um, but to, to just do it before you know yeah. before. I don't know when to say before it's too late, but it could be even though you're you have a lot of more years to live, maybe something happens, maybe you have a close, maybe your husband gets sick, or maybe you 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 can't you you can't take your health for granted. Yeah. So I think it's since maybe I don't think it's that they don't want to be with other kids, <laughs> no. but maybe they've been inspired. <laughs> Sure. To that's to, to do yes to, to follow to their live, dream their, to live in Italy to yeah be more separated from uh, and and they should that's yeah. good so it's yeah for us it's not the perfect thing <laughs> but we, through the through making the film we also started understanding them more I think really so so the documentary was kind of a did you start some sort of kind of conversation or dialogue with your own parents about about their age and things that they wanted to do. Yes, yeah, I guess so. so. It's it's um, yeah, it's really helping us understand them in that way, uh, and it's easy to see your parents as just someone that you can take for granted. And, mm -hmm. and I think we really started thinking about that. Yeah, and yeah. Um, to see them as persons. Yeah, more. <laughs> Did, now, this was, of course, this was your first documentary. This is your real your first foyer into into being filmmakers. Would you do it again, knowing like this is this is the mountain that we have to climb? Because you said you 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 you're moving on to other potential uh, projects. What what is on the horizon for you both? We want we want to do it, but it, in some ways, I want to be as naive as we were when we started because we just we didn't see any all all the things that could happen. 
that maybe we had, we had no expectations on uh, what would become of the, what we did we just did it on um, uh, like the joy of doing it so there was no like goal and goal to it but now now getting to know all the the whole process and you know all the steps and what happens when the film is done and how some we also you realize how unfair it is to make films because a lot of good films never get to we have we've been lucky to get get our film out there and like going to Sundance was the perfect start for a film but we we can also see if did this wouldn't have happened the film could have not getting gotten the attention it it had got the, has gotten now so you start to thinking about those things like if we spend four years doing another film and it just takes another turn some way and nothing happens to the film it's, this yeah, process it's... is it's more it's it's yeah. harder to to just be blank and think what what am i interested in 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 the subject you start thinking about the whole process of it but we're we're trying not to, and actually trying to just focus on what what am I interested in, in right now in my life. Um, but what I think, would be a fun thing to do yeah. for for us? We're trying to, but because it gets to, so easy that you start to think, okay, would somebody would want to fund <laughs> this? Would somebody want to see this? But with the calendar, we were just, oh, we have to do this. We have to do this. Yeah. It's so <laughs> fun. It's so interesting. We, we, we have this energy. Know. We want to see this. So, and then we were so, I guess, we we talked about the film with other people in a in a way that they had to be inspired, and yeah. we were. So we want to get back to that to that naivety and that uh, excitement about. Yeah another subject but it's it is hard i, I really think it's hard because it's it feels like you you see the obstacles yeah mm -hmm. and it's it is a risky business because when before we had more other incomes from the graphic design and the music yeah and now it's okay yeah we shifted our ca careers in doing this and it's hard to go back to doing the other thing because this is so much fun <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> you want to yes. spend your time doing projects that you love and that you are doing for yourself and so that's our i think we have a few we're developing a few few ideas now and i think we have a few good ones hopefully, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> but as i said we will, might spend this time traveling around doing nothing if <laughs> well you had mentioned you mentioned Sundance and Calendar Girls had an amazing festival run by any standard. Uh, how many festivals did you get into? Uh, I think it's a little bit over forty. Yeah, it was something. forty last time we counted. Yeah. I think, might but it's be still uh, it's still coming, and yeah, it's a few more, a few more, and uh, we we also thought maybe you know we you'd never know if you if we will if you we will have this opportunity again so when festivals ask do you want to come do you want to represent the film and we always said yes yeah because every time we we can it's been a few a few no's but because it's we just want to make the most of it and it's been it's been a very 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 fun year well, and talk talk a little bit about Sundance. So, of course, Sundance is you know the 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 festival that every filmmaker wants to get into. What was it was it as difficult to get into as you'd assumed? Did you need help to get into it? And what was the what was the experience like in itself? Um, was it hard to get in? <laughs> it's, it wasn't hard since we did, but, but <laughs> I guess it's really. Yeah. <laughs> So you didn't you didn't know anyone at Sundance. You just did a submission and then and then no, happened we, to get uh, a submission. We, we had did. a meeting. Uh, I think we did a um, it was a, a pitch funding a, funding pitch uh, a year before it was finished and in in Sweden yeah. it's a Nordic documentary festival. So we did a pitch on that one. And, and then we there at that pitch we had a meeting. After that pitch we had a meeting with one of the programmers uh, for Sundance. Oh wow! Like uh, she really liked the idea, I think, and yeah. so we just tried to stay in contact with her uh, and just update on how the film is developing. And 
we when... weren't ready this that yeah. year. She said, send it in. We will look at it. We said, we're, no, we're not ready yet. But the year after, yeah. we were ready to, to send it. So, yeah. And then we applied for some other fest- big festivals before that. Um, so you're just counting down and you get some no's and you get some no's and then you start to lose your confidence. Every no's, like it brings you down a bit and you try to try to use that and just work harder if you get a no yeah, make okay, it better we'll make the film better and so in the end we just had sundance was like our last option okay <laughs> oh, let's just hope this happens and then we you put all your focus in in on making this happen so i think we did all we could like just reaching out to the contact we had but i i don't think it really changes your um chances of getting in there if you know something i think it's more of you have to have you have to make a good film and you have to have a lot of like uh, luck that your film has a subject that fits the other that year and for films so we're very humble about you know we were lucky there's a lot of really great great film of course but there's so many others big festivals and it's not that that the films are not good it's just it's just hard to get you can't there's only so many hours in the day you can only watch so many films um yeah yes. now when it came to to distribution and sales did you when you were on the festival run is that where you found your your sales agents and your distributors uh we had some um no i think we did before actually it was uh we had distribution yeah, we had that before Sundance. Yeah. So, but then a lot of things have have happened, and I, I don't think we should talk <laughs> about this actually. But yeah, but but it, we ended up doing the, the theatrical release. Uh, yeah. In the U.S. And then the film will be released with Greenwich uh, Entertainment in. Yeah. In digital. In, in February. February. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic! Congratulations. Yeah, that's good. Uh, now, I, I don't want to get into numbers and things like that, but to speak to your point before about how this is a it's a difficult business. You never know what's going to come down the pack, uh, the path you you have two kids. So, of course, you want to plan for their futures as well. Did you find that using Calendar Girls as a template, is this a, a sustainable job that you can do moving forward oh. and be at least? <laughs> somewhat confident that you'll uh, you'll have a roof over your head and you'll have some some food in the refrigerator uh good question um <laughs> i would say no if, <laughs> i would say it's not a sustainable anyway. it's not sustainable it's, and it's no guarantees to have a roof over your head. <laughs> no. but, you, but you do it anyway uh I don't and know. We'll find a way in some. There's way. always ways to make it work. I think I've been working as a. I've been freelancer all my life, and, and there's never been never any can. security in, in any way at all. Anytime I have always been like, okay, how's how am I gonna solve, uh, paying the rent next mm-hmm. month? But it always works out. So I'm and I'm in. My, I'm 40 years old now, and it's been working since, uh, for 20 years. So. There is some kind of stability and sustainability to that, I think. Yeah, we'd make it somewhere. <laughs> you know, we can also do some graphic design and some compose. We could, yeah. you know, make a mix. But I think all. if you if you do good uh, work, it will work out in the end. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if you don't, you know, need a lot, a lot. Yeah, you also have to the... keep your uh, try to keep your costs Cost. down. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> try and stay relaxed. Just relax. I've spoken to a few filmmakers uh, who are based out of Europe, and on the one hand, it feels like there's there's definitely some pros and some cons. The some of the pros being that there is a lot of government funding for filmmakers and for the arts. However, the con then becomes: yes, you can go make a project, but it has to fit in this very specific. Um, kind of box. So are you finding, you know, with Calendar Girls, it was a very surprising documentary that I don't think, I don't think anyone would expect to go out and ask to find a documentary like this. You had to just stumble across it. Um, have you found that the the European kind of uh, um, funding format will help you in the future? Or is it just going to be too specific for the sort of projects that you want to take on? I don't think it's that specific 
actually there are yeah you no there's i think i would say it's the opposite of specific it's and uh, the great thing about that kind of we funding can always, is always only talk about sweden of yeah course, in but, sweden, or I, maybe the nordic i think europe countries. is similar most europe but especially in, in the nordic countries it's the funding is very open to new ideas and that's part of the um, the whole uh, how it works and uh, they want to to try to uh encourage new filmmakers and new ideas about filmmaking so so they encouraged us to you know be more brave and to be more yeah really so and yeah. it's uh, all the ideas that are, they are funding it's actually coming from the directors or the producers so it's it's not that they are asking for these kinds of stories it's they it's very it's very uh, what you say it's uh, when it's everyone can go and try to fund their film and that's very oh very inclusive yeah like yeah. it's um, of course you have to be to, even to try to think about doing a film you have to have some kind of financial stability otherwise you can't afford to try to do it but it's open to anyone that can yeah you have... come to them with your idea your project everything that you that you want to do yeah. and present it to them a lot of time i think it's maybe good to partner with with a more experienced person but we could get go to them and I mean, it's we didn't think when we started that we were going to be able to fund our whole film through the uh, with no experience, no like who are they, and they have never done anything, and they have a film idea. Let's give them a lot of money and see what happens. That's but, a really good thing. <laughs> that, <laughs> yes, that is possible. Yes. You wouldn't get that if you go to private investors. No one would give us any money for this idea no it's and too risky just, but they take, could risk they could take that risk yeah they have they they are not interested in getting their money back they are interested in making a high quality film and also you get you not that you get a full budget as a start you get some development funding then uh, you go back and what do you think about this yeah. and then you get some more and more and yeah. then it's so it's and if for us it's been a as we talked about before that we shared everything with with some filmmaking friends who also shared everything with the Swedish Film Institute. And, and that was also a very, very good, good thing to get their thoughts about it. Yeah. And so, it's nice to have, you could get to keep all the create creative, like uh, no one's, no one can tell us what to do with the film. It's our decision until the end. And that's, that's the thing we were very scared of in the beginning is to, if we were going to bring in, outside uh funding from like private funding or uh executive producers and just giving away away the the ability to do the exactly what we wanted all the time so and through this um funding that we got you get to do that you had, they are not telling you to do something else with the film uh, is, uh, i guess there are some some limits but they never said anything to us that you can do this you yeah can't do. so you felt you felt a real sense of autonomy and freedom uh yeah uh, absolutely that. oh, that's fantastic i find it hard because we've been in the us we don't know that much ho about how it works but when when we talk to other directors and it seems like you have to know a lot of the right people to be able to do a film uh, it's hard to come from nowhere and just go and get funding for a film then you have to fund it yourself or yeah you no know, have some rich friends or something <laughs> just to knowing knowing rich people certainly helps you put together an indie film that that'll do it but uh but yeah as well i think there's there's a lot of grants that are available in the united states but they they have very specific guidelines of what they're looking for and what they want and also um writing a proposal for each one of them becomes very very difficult and time consuming because you're spending all of your time writing out all of uh you know these specific essay forms that you have to in order to get this money so that becomes very difficult but it's it sounds like it, with in europe it was it was really you were just dealing with one agency yeah well there, yeah. there are a few yes. the most money come the biggest money comes from one big but as you said it's a lot of work just it's a lot writing of paperwork, all the yeah. applications it's, it's a lot insanely of 
insane amount of paperwork. Yeah. Yeah. But when you, yeah, it also it's... helps the filmmaking, I think. You have to like um you have to focus your ideas and present them in a, a good way. And for us it at least it helped helped us to see what's what's the film's um just to focus, I guess, yeah, to, 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 to focus on write it down, down yeah. to tell it in words to someone. So you, you know this, when this you're done kind... ten you feel like, Oh, I don't want to do another one, but it, at the beginning, it was very helpful yeah. because it we had to narrow down why is this film needed, yeah, or and why are we the right persons to tell it and everything like. And you like also that, get those that they ask, like you have some uh, points in time where you have to. I have to deliver this for this date and for this date because if you have just have your own, if you just have to answer to yourself, it's hard. You have to set up some goals, I guess, and. Sure. And um, that I think it helped for us just to, to have some deadlines, have some deadlines yeah. in the, the process. Because okay, now we, if we would have gotten all the money, just like here's uh, this amount of money, go out and make a film. I think we would have harder time focusing on okay, well, where should we start and where should we. So this, the, all so these the, applications. So the constraints were kind of were helpful for you, just to to give yourselves focus and to give yourselves deadlines. Uh, so now you've you've done a documentary. You've done it probably the hardest way you possibly can, uh, with these incredible amount of shoot days and then editing and then shooting and editing. Uh, do you see yourself? And clearly, you know, you're you're still very excited about film, and you still have a lot of energy and. Do you see yourself just moving forward with documentaries from here on out, or do you see like narrative coming in or television coming in? Do you do you think that there's a one specific path for yourselves, or or are you just keeping it open? I think we're very open. Um, we're also now starting to opening up for producing other films as well, just being a part of someone else's vision and help them. That's one part and. We're developing a an idea for a TV series. Um, wow. and it's a documentary. A yeah, documentary, documentary TV, TV short, uh, short, short form, format. But, so but it could be all, anything, yeah. but it could be a a, a narrative. from yeah. I mean, the future. Not, I think not... we have to do maybe a couple of more documentaries just to get into like. We still have a lot to learn about mm -hmm. yeah. that area, but Would when you... that starts to feel. Like, when that gets boring, I think it's when you know, to... yeah, we still have so much to learn. It's the feeling we have. We're just like open it up. When you start learning something, every everything seems so easy, and when you get to know a little bit more, you realize, okay, I know nothing about this. <laughs> but the first feeling of the feeling of thinking that something is easy because you know nothing about it, that's a good feeling. Yeah, uh, and then you have this this hard when you see, okay. Now I have to go and dig deeper and really understand how this works. So that's where we are now. I think <laughs> just trying yeah, to. But now we not, have to learn this for real. Yes, but we're not bored. No, not at all. So well now, because the the film has done really well, uh, at least on the festival circuit, and it's going to be coming out here in February. It sounds like it's you know you've. You you accomplished the dream, you know. You did it. You got your film out into the world. Yeah. Do you do you, do you feel like um, you've gained some sort of status now, but maybe in your home country, and maybe the next time you ask for money, it will be a little bit easier for them because, like, oh, of course we know them. They did Calendar Girls. Yeah. Yeah. I hope so. <laughs> I yeah, I think. So. I guess it's but the idea is the most important thing. But yes, it it is of course easier to to say oh here we have a new idea do you want to look at it and i think it was but the thing is we, it would never was that hard for us we were surprised ourselves that they gave us money <laughs> you, you know but we we, 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 we knew that we had a good idea and that we were doing good work but we thought it would be harder <laughs> but we were always way. over overdoing yeah we were we were very over delivering over delivering everything that's... like Okay, we have to cut the best trailer that ev anyone has ever seen, or we have to write the best application. And you know, if you do, if you put that has... goal that high, you always, you almost always succeed if you have. I hope we don't get goals. lazy now. Yeah, that's the that that's what could happen if you think, okay, we have done this. You should trust us now. And I think that's a danger of if you get 
to comfortable in your position. Yeah, it could be. So I hope we don't. I think we should try to just over deliver e- even more because that's how you <laughs> make a good film and not by being comfortable in no. I think oh, I know how to do this. I'm I'm confident with myself. Yeah. And try. We should do it in another way. If we feel that way, then we should try to do it in a completely different way. I think. So it sounds to like uh, the the real takeaways that you two are kind of imparting to people is one, just you you put your best foot forward, like always do your best work. That's always the way that you're going to kind of stand as, stand apart from everyone else. And then also you you sound like you're very open to experimentation as well and trying something, you know, because as you said, you know, you walked into this blindly, you didn't know what was happening. So uh, now moving forward, first off, before uh, um, we go any further, um, how do people find you? How do people find the movie? What do we, what do you have? How do we, how do we get to you? Um... Instagram is Kellen Girls Film. Uh, Facebook, Facebook. Kellen Girls Film. And um, the website is Kellen Girls Film. Film. <laughs> 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 and you can find all that. It's still uh, it's still playing in uh, some uh, theaters around the US. So and it's adding. We're still adding cities that we're trying to book some more cities. So if you go to Kellen you can see all the dates in the US. Um, and but I guess most. Facebook and Instagram are most updated. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then yeah. it's going to be available from February February 21st. I think it will be available on like all the streaming, you know, Apple, Amazon. Things I don't know, like all that. <laughs> We're not it's not on sure. us. Yeah. It's on Greenwich. So but it will good. be uh, streamable from mid-February. That's it. Uh, okay, so we have a, a couple of final questions for you. Um, what is the best filmmaking advice that you've ever gotten? Oh. Uh, I think the best for us was the advice that a friend gave us. Um, is make a film about... Make sure that you like the people that you're filming because you're going to spend so much time with them. Mm. Yeah. And I think that really... It was a good thing for us, especially as the first time filmmakers, because you get you yeah, you get personal, you get yeah. you you get friends, you get it's and we're thinking you about sp- that as for new projects. Do I really want to spend my next four years with this person or these persons? If the answer is no, I don't think it of course there has to be films that are made yeah. about really but it was bad a good, people. good advice for us what is the worst filmmaking advice you have ever gotten uh good oh. question and you don't have to say who told it to you <laughs> keep that keep that to yourself i don't i don't know if i have a specific one but it's it's been a lot of people saying be, because they want to be no be i kind. think it, no sorry they a lot of people said in the beginning it's too hard you shouldn't yeah, do too it too hard that it's maybe make it right make it yeah. don't that was the worst that was, i hate when people say that it's just why are you saying this we have a lot of energy we want to do this and you're just saying it's hard that is the absolute worst film advice which is just don't bother everyone knows that it's hard yeah we know yeah. it's hard so how do we move yeah forward? exactly so yes. that's so when good, people good, try to don't maybe do it, they do it because bad, bad they want advice. to be kind they want to be nice and they want to be nice you know lower low our expectations yeah. but to low but to do that I... so yeah they want to protect you but in protecting you then you get nothing accomplished like if you really wanted to be safe you just sit at home under your bed don't do it because you get that a lot in 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 the whole process of when you're doing the film or doing the distribution or doing anything it's just don't do it it's gonna be hard it's gonna, it's be hard. gonna, it's gonna, gonna cost a lot, a lot of, of money time. It's gonna <laughs> take a lot of time uh what was the first film you've ever considered that you've made? It could be a student project or maybe a music video. What was the first thing you ever made, and how do you feel about it now? Um, oh. The first film we ever made. Well, it can be anything. That could be. It could be a student film. It could be like you know. I made. Uh, I made film when I was a kid. I made like those Lego films. You know. Oh, like a stop motion. Yeah, yeah. Was, uh, how do you feel about that? 
<laughs> for a long time, but I, I know I was happy about them when we did it. <laughs> I was proud, <laughs> proud at that time. So you, okay, well, that, that's kind of an interesting insight because you must be an extremely patient person to do, like to be a child to do stop motion animation. So documentary was no big deal for you at all. It was a different time then. You had a lot more time as a kid, I think, and more. <laughs> you didn't have those uh, distractions that kids do now. Uh, and then my final question, is making movies hard? No. No. <laughs> Really? <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, we don't want to to, to anyone no, to say. No, we want to encourage people to do it. No, so don't say. You know, it's of hard. course it's hard. Yeah, you know, it's it's, it's it is hard, but but it's mostly yeah. fun. Yeah, if you have to, if you have to say one thing about making films, it's fun. You know, it's a lot of st stress. It is, but it's you know when we. When this this produce has, you kind of miss it as well. When you get back to your yeah. more normal, yeah, life. like everyday life is harder. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Okay, get through everyday life is, I think, it's harder than making a film because you have so much because energy it's more and you, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, I, I really want to thank the two of you for taking the time and coming on the podcast. We really appreciate it. Uh, congratulations on everything you've already done and best of luck to everything you're going to be doing in the future. So thank you very much and please stay in touch. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you. It's Thanks been for a very us. nice talking to you again. Eric, give me your uh, highlights from your talk with Maria and Luv. The, well done, first off, with the same. Um, I, I, the few things that really stuck out to me, one, I was so impressed with the fact that it was just the two of them. They were the entire crew on this whole wow. thing, uh, which was incredible. And also, it's such a well-made documentary, and this is their first time as filmmakers. They, they both have roots in the entertainment industry. He is a composer. Uh, she uh, it does graphic design and is, is an art director and has been for many years. But this is their first time like really making a film. And it, it's so touching and so beautiful. Um, I was the reason I think it went from just being kind of a neat idea was their vulnerability. One of the things that they had mentioned is, of course, this is a documentary about these retirement age women who dress up pretty provocatively and then they choreograph these really intricate dances and then they go and to, to public locations and then they do these dances uh, for charities. Uh, a lot of them have to do with animal rescue for uh, returning veterans. Um, but they'll do kind of, you know, these things for anything. And they are initially, the filmmakers thought to themselves like, oh, look at these older women dressing up, trying to get attention. You know, like, gosh, it's just desperate. It's sweaty. But then they realize after getting to know these women, like, no, they're, they're just having a lot of fun. And yes, they are older women, but aren't older women allowed to dress up how they want to? They've They've lived their lives, you know, they can just do this and have a good time. And it really made them look very introspectively towards themselves and what box they put these older women in, you know, in society and the same way society does as well. Like, you know, we want them to be elderly women and be little grandmas and then that's sort of it. Like, no, you can do whatever you want at any age. Um, and also, I was really impressed with the fact that they must really like one another because they have two kids <laughs> They did this documentary together. They work together. They live together. They raise children together. It's like they're around each other all the time. And I love my wife. We've been together forever and a day, but we don't work together. And I like my some alone time. Uh, <laughs> so I was really, really impressed. Like, wow, you have a very well working relationship. That it, it was something very inspiring. So that was that was my big takeaways from them. That sounds awesome. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's one thing, you know, to just be a partner to somebody, but it's another thing to work with them creatively on something Yeah, that is like really could be challenging, you know, um, just with any partnership. So doing it with your, 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 you know, your life partner. Oh, man, I can't I can't imagine how challenging that could be. But it sounds like they've got to figure it out, which is awesome. And they have two really little kids. They have their oh, wow. kids, I believe, are four and five years old. 
Wow. Uh, so, yeah, they were doing all of this while raising children. It's like, wow. Wow. I'm, uh, oh, the other amazing takeaway, and if you listen to the interview, you can hear me gasp audibly. Um, so they have uh, they have childcare leave, uh, and the government pays them money uh, so that you can just spend time with your child. Uh, a year and a half, if you are in Sweden and you have a kid, the government pays you a year and a half's wage so that you can just go be with your child and that is incredible because that's in, crazy in the united states uh you get um you get i think like three months maybe not yeah that's not no standard is um eight weeks for men i don't know what it is for women it's it's i think it's a little bit more than that for women I'm trying to remember when my when my wife went on maternity leave i think it was the sort of thing like you could get five months at like 50 percent pay or you could get three months at 100 percent pay and i think we did something in the middle i think we did like four months at like 75 percent pay yeah but it was that sounds about right but sweden man that's a, that's the way to go that's nuts yeah we gotta move to sweden for our, when we have our next babies although i think you're probably done having babies uh, we're done yeah i'm i don't know maybe i'm done maybe i'm not who knows we'll see oh um but eric uh, I think it's time to ask the question uh, for the game. Um, since you're the creator and you're here, do mm -hmm. you want to explain to everybody what the game is? So the game is a made up indie film situation. Uh, it is the idea that you're either going into production, you're trying to make a film, you're on set and something happens, some calamitous thing. Uh, it is a problem that you encounter uh, as a filmmaker and then I normally pose the question to Liz and Ulrich, and then they have to answer it. But this time, we have a we have a surprise uh, question for me. Yeah, this is a, a something that a listener sent in to us. Uh, Eric was not on the email chain, which was very fortuitous. Um, so I've got this right here. Um, they've been asked to be uh, left anonymous. So we will not know who this person is. But listener, thank you so much for taking the time to write this question. Here we go, Eric. It is time. Let's do this. So you are attached to direct a larger studio film that you've been working to develop for several years. You love this project. You love this script. You feel like this could be a very, very big deal for your career. Finally, the project starts to take off. But oops, you get pregnant. Oh, by the way, you are a human capable of physically rearing a child in about eight <laughs> months. <laughs> and to add to that, on top of all that, you're 40 with fertility problems. So this has been something that you've been working on and waiting for for a long time. And it's like kind of a miracle that it's happened. Yeah. So do you tell your producers that you are pregnant and let them decide the fate of you and your project? Push the making of the film until after your term and push to get on set as soon as you are physically able uh, risking being replaced as well as knowing that if you do push the shoot, by the time you get on set, you may be potentially experiencing the baby blues, postpartum depression, postpartum physical trauma, and or separation anxiety. C, or do you push to make the film within the next eight months, knowing that the high levels of anxiety you will experience you can, it can impact your developing child, and the more you show, the more you'll experience potential discrimination from your financiers and producers who could, again, easily replace you. D, other. And it's, this person says, feel free to tap into fun pro-choice pro-life arguments. What do you do, director? What do you do? Wow, I like that we're getting political now too on the show. It's fantastic. I I have to say, I, I'm I'm of two minds because when um when my wife uh, I'm the stay-at-home father uh in for in our relationship my my wife has a real job uh and it is far more steady and far more lucrative than being an indie filmmaker uh so i when the kids were born it was me it was you know, i changed all the diapers i you know still pick them up from school i help them with their homework uh, i make their lunches in the morning i drive them to school uh all of that stuff um and i will say and i've had many conversations with my wife about this uh, I did not like having babies. Babies were <laughs> really difficult and in 
not that rewarding. They're adorable, beautiful to look at. <laughs> But it was so hard. Now that when the kids got older, when they were like elementary school age, then I started having a blast. Uh, and this is actually, it's a thing that my wife and I have talked about many times, is the fact that uh, this is, what I'm saying is not unique for men. There's a lot of guys who just do not connect with their child till it's a little bit older. Um, however, so having said that, in that mind frame, uh, but I'm also trying to approach it from, as she said, you know, like I'm I'm the woman in this scenario, and I'm 40. I've been having right. fertility problems, and this is something I've I've spoken with about friends of mine who decided to have kids later in life. Um, quick funny side story. So my wife had our first baby when she was 33, and oh, 35, and she was convinced when she got pregnant. It was never going to work out. She was the oldest woman in the world. It was just, it's, her ovaries had dust on them. Uh, and then we went to a parenting class before she gave birth, and we were the youngest people by 10 years. Wow. So don't worry. You're fine. Uh, but now having said that, if in this scenario, uh, I'm a woman who's had fertility problems in the past, um, I would say um, I would put the... I don't know if the, I don't know if this is in the A, B, and C, but I would put the pregnancy first, uh, because for as fun and as cool as movies are, the family is going to be forever. Like you know, you, you look back and be like, yeah, I made that movie, that's cool. But like having a child is far more fun and far more important, and will be far more rewarding than just making one movie. It will, of course, be devastating. It will hurt. Uh, because you've been working on it for you know development for for years and years, uh, and it could potentially you know make your career and all of these other great things. But I think putting time into family is always going to be a better bet. So uh, I don't know. Does that answer the question? Did I answer yeah. it? Uh, so basically, you would you know tell your producers and yeah. let them decide the fate about the project. Basically, you'd be like, I, I'm having this baby. You know. I want to do the movie if I can, but this is a really the the or would you actually just step away and just remove yourself from the project? You know what I think I would do? I think I would uh, I wouldn't just put it in their hands. What I would do is I would sit them down. And if I've really been working with them for years, hopefully we've built a relationship and they understand and they they will recognize that the work that I put into it. I understand like this is a speeding train. Sometimes you got to just go. But I would at least say like, hey, listen, I'm pregnant. I think I can probably work up to this date. Uh, and then maybe we can spend that other time. How far along are we in the process? Are we already attaching actors? Have we set a production date? Um, it's just taking off. It starts to take off. Like, it's probably going to be shot in the next six six months plus something. Like okay. That. Okay. But, like, basically it's got momentum. Like, it's going to happen now. Yeah. Okay. Um, I would I would explain it to my producers. I would say, like, look, I am not know how I'm going to be able to feel. Uh you know, because I've had, you know, some, some fertility issues, I may be fine and then just give birth to the baby and need, you know, a couple of months off and then I'm back, back to it. Uh, or it may be the sort of thing that like, yeah, maybe I have to excuse myself from the project and come back a year later. Um, so that's kind of a, that's at least what I would do. I would at least tee up to them how I'm feeling and what could potentially happen. And also, of course, I would love to be able to do both. But if one has to win out, it would be it would be the baby. Yeah. What about what about you, Alric? What do you think? So I, I like the honesty approach. I do the same thing where I would just talk to them, sit them down and be like, look, here's the situation because I don't want to try to hide it. I don't want to try to work around it. I want to just address it straightforward um and then be like this is what i want to do this is when i can work too you know whatever i i decide maybe you know it's my wife worked up until a week before our daughter was born wow she she <laughs> thought we she came a little early so we thought that we she had like two or three more weeks yeah it was like basically we she had to stop working because she got she could, went into a, an appointment and they were like oh my god like we would recommend to induce today uh, but we were like, well, when's the latest that you can, we can induce. And they're like, okay, well the weekend. So it was like, <laughs> holy shit. So it, it just hit us. We thought we had a lot more time, but still it's pretty nutty for her to work like up to like a month ahead. Um, yeah. 
But I think for me, like if I, and I mean, you know, it's hard to know without actually being a woman, like what you would do. Sure. But in my brain, I would say like, I would put a, a cutoff. Like I have to be done by like two months before the, the due date, you know, and be like, I want to make this movie. I want to direct it. I want to do everything, but I have to be done shooting by this time. And, you know, if, it, if we can't make that, then I would love to do it afterwards. But if that's not going to work for you guys, totally understand i'll stay on executive producer whatever whatever yeah. i want to be involved but this and then and that's how i would handle it i would just be straightforward like you said same thing and just like set some ground rules and try to make it happen but if it couldn't um just realize life's more important than you know a career although i mean i really would do everything as possible to make make the movie because if you do have this kind of you know we know right like if you get a chance to direct a studio movie like that could be what your life is yeah you know like yeah. one studio movie could be now you're just doing them you know if it goes well so it's like i feel like the chance and the the importance of that i i would really try to make it happen you know but i, I but i don't think you you don't make any friends you don't keep connections you don't make any kind of lasting relationships in in this business or relationships in this business if you lie to people yeah that you honesty is the way to go for sure and also, I think hiding a pregnancy, there is a limit that you can really hide things. Like, wow, she's wearing a lot of football jerseys these days. That's that's yeah. weird. Some point, they're going to figure it out. So yeah. might as well just let them know what you're going through. And then they can partner with you on it. And, like, you know, we're in a modern age where they're not going to just throw you away because you're pregnant. And, you know, I have heard I, I would love to hear from our listeners in this regards, especially if you're in the entertainment industry and if you are a mother, I think specifically. But I remember yeah. hearing an interview with Julianne Moore when she was working on uh, Jurassic Park 2, I believe, if I'm getting this all correct. And she really credited the the filmmakers for being so family friendly because she had just given birth. And, you know, they she you know was was nursing, you know, and she had PAs coming knocking on the door and she was in tears thinking like, oh, my God, I'm going to let this production down. And then the producers and the director coming to her and saying like, no, take your time. Like, don't worry about it. We can shoot around you like be with your child. We totally understand. So I don't know if that was because it was Julianne Moore and she was working on Jurassic Park, Two, Or if that was, was Steven Spielberg, of all people. Yeah, he's he, he knows how to make some movies. Um, <laughs> so I don't know, like, is that across the board? Have people had that kind of experience or is it just for the elite few? Yeah, I don't know. Weigh in, people. If you've had a bad experience or some sort of negativity around a pregnancy or a baby issue as a as a as a woman specifically uh we'd love to hear it you know or if you've had a, a good experience that would be fantastic as well no i, I only know. want to hear the bad ones if it's good <laughs> don't write in if it's a good one no yeah totally good or bad of course uh, <laughs> well whoever wrote this question thank you so much this is fantastic what a good one um very different than anything we've been asked before. Yes. Uh, Eric, did you like playing the game? Was it fun? Was it fun as we have playing it? Yeah. You know what? I, I was so nervous going into it because you and Liz are so good at it and you're both so articulate and you you really look at it from all angles. And there's, I mean, you know, whenever I write a question, I'm always kind of trying to get you two in a bind. But then you always end up having answers that go in some direction I never even thought of before. So I'm always really, really impressed with the two of you. So I was I was nervous going into it, but it is a lot of fun. I like it a lot. Nice. Yeah. Well, when you wrote three questions in like, you know, whatever, a week when we did, we, we stockpiled <laughs> segments for, for the holidays. I was like, damn. Is he going to be able to keep on doing this? Like, this is really good. Like, is he going to run out of ideas at some point? I was like, I don't know, but this is really great. So, so I guess listeners, if you have more of these, please send them in. We want to hear them. Um, I mean, Eric is going to be fine, I'm sure. But, you know, I'm sure you could use whatever help you want to give him. If you want to send a question, comment or suggestion or a question for the game, you can do that at podcast at making moves hard.com. Or if you like the show, you can leave us a review on iTunes, which would be fantastic. We don't have any reviews uh, in December. Give us, yeah, give us a, a, a year-end 2022 review. That would be great. How did we do in 2022? Did we do as well as 2021 or was it not as good? Uh, way better? Uh, room <laughs> for improvement? Let us know. Um, you can also check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at MMIH Podcast and YouTube at Making Movies is Hard Podcast. We're also at TikTok. 
I don't know what our thing on TikTok is, but I'm sure if you just look, making movies is hard up on TikTok, you'll find us. Thanks to Maria Lufford and Lahuv Martinson for coming on the show. And thanks to our very own Liz Manichel for setting up this interview in the first place. Thanks to Eric for doing the editing and being amazing. And thanks to Eric also for being awesome and recording this bonus episode in the first place and for being here with me to talk about it. So much fun. And thanks to Ulrich Purcell for being a fantastic host and uh, just an all around great guy. Thanks for listening and we'll talk to y'all next week. I think without any delay, let's get to your conversation with um, Maria uh, Lefoy. Uh, why don't I go ahead and take this? Uh, all right, without any more jibber jabber, why don't we go ahead and go to my interview with Maria Luftoff and Luv Martinson and their movie, Calendar Girls. <laughs> <laughs> all right, get to this part. <laughs>